What's going on guys? Uh, so I made a drag bit for engraving on my CNC router the other day and I uh, figured I'd go ahead and make a quick overview video of the tool and how to make one as uh, when I got to looking on YouTube before all this there really wasn't a lot on there uh, about this exact subject. And uh, while there are one or two videos uh, showing guys making their own or using ones that they've made, uh, I didn't really feel like there was that much info uh, as far as the parts and pieces that go into one of these things. And uh, the main thing I wanted to know was uh, like the weight of the spring, for instance, and, uh, you know, maybe a couple of the other measurements uh, of how the tools uh, went together. So... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and throw this together. I had planned on a much more detailed build video, uh, but even just getting halfway through the machining process of uh, making this one, uh, it would have been a pretty excessively long video. So in the interest of the greater good, we'll try to consolidate things down just a little bit. And uh, I'll just give you enough of an overview and enough information that you should be able to make one of these yourself, uh, or at least one similar enough to it uh, to get the same results that I do and have a nice functioning tool. So uh, most of you probably already know what this is if you happen upon this video, and uh, it should be pretty self-explanatory in the title. Uh, but this is a CNC drag bit for CNC engraving. Uh, it's a little more than just a spring-loaded point that chucks into your CNC spindle and pushes down into the material you wish to engrave, uh, and then your toolpath pretty much takes care of the rest. Uh, now, John Sanders does have a very good uh, little engraving video. I think it was a Widget Wednesday uh, where he shows the Tormac uh, equivalent of this bit and uh, how he programmed and set everything up on a powder-coated piece of aluminum. Uh, I'll see if maybe I can link that down in the description uh, below if I remember to do that. Uh, it pretty much covers anything that I won't be. Uh, or at least enough to get you guys started and uh, really helped me out as well. Uh, but as far as making the tool itself, uh, it really couldn't be much simpler. Uh, if you've got a lathe that's very straightforward, uh, even if you just have a drill press, you can make that work. Uh, main thing you want to consider when building these uh, is you do want the point to be as perfectly centered as possible. Uh, if it is off center at all, even though the spindle is not rotating under power when using this, uh, as you are going around your engraving, uh, you know, if it is off center, it's probably going to turn as you're dragging left and right. And uh, if it's not perfectly center, you're going to lose that reference and your uh, letters are going to be crooked and offset. And uh, things just aren't going to line up like you want them to. Uh, another main consideration, you do not want any wiggle or play in the shank of the point engraving point. Uh, obviously any wiggle will throw off the center as well. And uh, other than that, uh, the spring tension is probably your next biggest consideration. And uh, I'll show you the one that I used, uh, which I think is just about perfect so far. Uh, time will tell if I want to make it a little lighter or heavier. Uh, it's not that big a deal. I can just order more springs, uh, take the set screw out and pop one in there, and uh, that'll be done. So uh, other than that, uh, probably not much more to say about that. Uh, I will show you my parts list. Uh, this was enough to build two. Uh, the price came out for me to roughly what the cheapest one I could buy off the shelf would run me. So about $50, uh, give or take. And uh, I've got enough not only to build two, but I have several parts left over from the springs to the uh, round rod that I used. And uh, I went with uh, Precision Ground 4140 uh, just to fit in the collet a little bit easier uh, as well as uh, to be hardenable should I think it needs it. I don't think it will. Uh, again, the springs, they come in packs of 12. Uh, you'll have some left over. But I'll probably uh, say go ahead and nix this 2.7 pounds per inch, uh, this part number here. Uh, I think that's probably too light for most applications. Uh, you may disagree uh, as you get to using them. I'll leave that up to you guys. Uh, but currently I'm using the 7.4 pounds per inch spring uh, part number here. Seems to be working pretty well. Uh, 
Then besides that, I've just got a little bushing, which I'll show you in a moment. It goes on the end of your scribe point. Uh, and for the point, I'm using a tool room grinding wheel cleaner or a dressing point, uh, 1 8 in shank diameter with a 90 degree angle. Uh, McMaster, I think for this part number, only sells a couple of different angles. I want to say 70 or 75 uh, and then the 90. Uh, I chose the 90. I think that's a pretty good compromise between too narrow and too broad. Uh, the more narrow you are, obviously, the more fragile the point. So uh, I think this will hold up a little bit better and uh, should be fine for most applications. So pause the screen if you want those numbers. The only thing not on here is the set screw, uh, which I used a 5 16 by 18 threads per inch set screw. And uh, that seems to work pretty well uh, if you put this on the lathe with a quarter inch drill bit. Uh, a good sharp 5 16 inch tap will cut into that uh, without having to really modify or widen that hole uh, too much at all. So uh, as far as construction, uh, length on this body is one and three quarters inches. Uh, I've just got a little chamfer there, mostly for aesthetics. Uh, I've gone ahead and tapped, once again, a 516 by 18 uh, threads into that about half an inch down. And uh, then the quarter inch drill bit, uh, I drilled that out to just about a quarter inch from the end uh, of the nose here. If you can visualize that, I think I even yeah, drew a little diagram there. So that's kind of what it looks like. Set screw, spring, this is a point with a bushing on it. And uh, that's kind of what the inside looks like uh, from a cross section. And uh, just to take it apart really quickly. I didn't put any Loctite on this yet. I'm not sure if I even need to. You can even back it up with a second set screw if you want. But a uh, spring goes in the middle there. And uh, this is what really makes it work. Uh, I've got your diamond point. Uh, and then on the end, I just silver soldered a bronze bushing, uh, 0.125 ID, 0.250 OD. Now, I did have to take just a whisper of a cut on the lathe uh, of material off of that so it would slide nicely in there. Uh, just make sure after you drill and tap everything, you know, deburr it, and then make sure it slides in there uh, easily. And uh, if you got to take a little material off, uh, you could do it on a lathe or chuck it into a drill with a little bit of sandpaper. Uh, very easy to do. As for the solder, uh, I use silver solder. You could use probably any kind of plumbing or electrical solder. Uh, it's not going to be under that much force or compression or tension. Uh, this is really just to keep it from falling out the bottom of your holder there. So assembly is just as easy as disassembly. Stick it in there. Pop the spring in there, which is a 240 thousandths OD. So plenty of wiggle room on that. Then you just put your set screw in and you're good to go. Uh, now you probably want to go ahead and just kind of break it in a little bit on a piece of scrap uh, just to kind of smooth any burrs you might have on your shaft or your inside there. Make sure it's not hanging up anywhere. Uh, a little drop of oil or grease may not be the worst thing either. Uh, but that's pretty much it, guys. There's really not much to this, uh, just as long as everything's centered so that you have minimum to no run out on your point. Uh, you should have some pretty good results. And uh, here's my first trial run. Uh, I did do a couple passes deep, but uh, really nothing beyond that. Uh, no deburring, no cleanup yet. And uh, I think it worked pretty nicely. So uh, that's it, guys. If you have any questions, leave them below. I'll do my best to answer them. Again, the tolerances or, you know, the diameters you know, the size of the point, the size of the body, probably not all that critical. Uh, use your common sense, and uh, you should be able to make something similar, if not identical, uh, or at least something uh, for your own uses that should work just as well. So uh, we'll try to keep this at 10 minutes. Uh, once again, I do thank you for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.